All right, everybody. So this is the start of the disassembly. As you can see, all the skins are still on. And what I'm doing here is I'm working on the side trim. Now the side trim, um, if you can see here, there's this metal bracket that lives behind it. So when you install it, I'm gonna show you something. I already have this off, but what you wanna do is you want to get, there's a lip right here. When you install it, you wanna get it over this bracket like so. Okay, and that's how it lives. Now, here's the deal. The driver's side trim piece, to remove it, this slider here is lives like so. Okay, so what that does is moves your seat forward and reverse, all right? But here's the deal. Uh, this piece here comes off uh, simply, as you can see, there's just little tabs with a trim tool. So it's positioned like so. You're gonna take a trim tool and do yourself a favor. Go to Harbor Freight or wherever else. Get yourself a nice set of trim tools, especially if you work on your cars, you're gonna need them for push clips, to get them in and out, and just basically get under it and pry out on both sides. And this little uh, bezel of a switch is gonna come off. Those are your controls there. And then all you're gonna do is you're just basically going to unsnap this little guy. Now from there, this is gonna expose the side plate. So as you can see, see this lip here and this lip here. So as you can see, the front section here, this glides over this corner piece and then this top piece will overlay this bracket and it makes it into a nice fit. But here's the problem. As you can see, I'm dealing with all the original stuff. So this tab here is where the screw goes. And the screw is right there. And unfortunately, uh, when I pulled this apart, I felt right away that the screw wasn't really holding anything in place. So what I'm going to have to do is maybe, it's not a necessity, but order some new... Um, trim pieces okay so this will be a passenger piece i got lucky on the driver's side where this was partially uh broken and i was still able to uh countersink this screw but anyway let me show you how this works so you're going to take a drill oops first you're going to take a drill bit it's a phillips put it in the drill and you're going to unscrew One, two, and then here's the here's the third one here. It's so hard to do everything with one hand. You know, I give it to people that um, do it all the time. But anyway, so you got a screw here, you got a screw here, and you got a screw on the bottom to uh, remove this bracket that this. Uh, trim piece or this bezel once again i use bezel a lot which that's what it is it goes over so don't lose the screws you're gonna need them also don't lose this piece you're gonna need it and once again this this is the first piece that you remove this pops off and then if you have a uh, somewhat of a fresh uh sight trim or sight bezel you're gonna remove a screw um out of it so what i normally do is i'll gather all the pieces even the broken ones in place um here's the second screw i think the third screw is somewhere under the under the seat there it is so you got three screws and then you have this screw which is obviously for the side trim which oops, which um came right off and where the hell did it go now there it is so, okay so in total you have four screws so normally this screw here which lives in here so this is where your adjustment lever goes and this is where the screw goes would normally go here but like i said as you can see this outer piece oops, this inner piece jesus this inner piece is broken so it popped right off so anyway now all you have to do is just literally take this bracket off. It's yours. 
And then you can take this guy, which is your power seat, and you can pull it out. And as you can see, there's a little push tab right there. You're going to, uh, let me uh, set the phone down. You're going to remove that just like so. And believe it or not, yes, they thought things through. You see this little cutout? So when you're putting it back in, I was like, oh man, am I gonna put it in right? Yes, you are. So you see that? This little notch meets this little cutout. So when you put it back in, this is gonna be forward, this is gonna be reverse. And obviously, being that this is a, um, a power seat, this is for your bolsters. I believe this one is for your back. Not really sure. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is what this is for. So this is uh, back and forth there. And then this guy here. Well, actually, now that I think about it, you know, this is just, this is just the, uh, see, I got, I got it all wrong. This is just, this is forward. Okay, so this is forward, this is reverse, this is seat down, this is seat up, and this controls. So basically, this is a three-way seat, right? It would be a three-way seat or a six-way? One, two, three, four, five. So six-way seat, there you go, six-way seat. I never even knew it. I've never even sat in a passenger seat. I thought it was just a, a two-way, but I guess it's a six-way seat. Okay, now this plug here is for the bolsters. So basically you got a, a airbag here, airbag here, and I don't know why I'm getting out of focus. Uh, let's see, let's see if I can, there you go. And then you got a cushion here in this middle middle piece. So same thing, all you're gonna do is you're going to um, reach in over here, and then uh, once again, let me set it down before I cut wires, or break wires. So it's giving me a little bit of a uh, problem. There we go. Okay. So this comes off with the trim. So this is the trim here. And I did notice there's a slight little crack here, but not a big deal. I'm going to try to salvage this and put a washer and see if I can actually grab it with the washer. If not, um, I can always replace it. Uh, later with the seat in the car because you have plenty of room. But anyway, you see this right here? This lip. Okay, let me just set it down. So this lip here will go over this piece and then this upper lip will sit over the top of the bracket and basically tightens everything up. And Here's the secondary cut that I was telling you guys about. So you're going to have to cut this out on your new skin. Now, this is a lot more forgiving because you have, uh, believe it or not, obviously, not only this piece, but this trim piece that goes on the side to cover any overcuts or any imperfections, unlike the um, that little bezel for the recline. Anyway, so at this point, you are honestly ready to disassemble the seat. So what I'm going to do is I will take a break, put all my tools away, and then probably tomorrow, which will be in the same video, we'll start with step two. All right, so I got the seat flipped over, as you can see. Uh, that's the bottom of the frame. That's the main rail. That's all the guts, airbag harness, your main electrical harness. The first thing you want to do is very simple. You want to go ahead and remove these clips that hold down your bottom cushion. And what you're going to do is you're going to have to use some side cutters. Snip. 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 And then the third snip, always the hardest, but that is the first step. And I'm gonna show you guys uh, what you're gonna use, or at least what I use to um, replace them with when you put the new skins on. All right, so once you unhook the three rings, this is part of your bottom cushion that you sit on. You're also going to see, well actually I apologize. This, yeah, this is still the bottom cushion. So this is your bottom cushion. Then you have a Velcro from OEM that you're going to undo. 
just like this. Okay, and then you have this rope, which what that does, it goes, there's a channel, which I'll show you again when we put the new cushion on, or the new leather skin for the cushion on, I should say. This basically goes in between the rail, uh, comes down here, in between the channels here, and it's just tied off to keep the leather skin on the bottom cushion. Now, I use the wire. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what wire I use because I'll have to go to Lowe's and get some uh, more wire and also some hardware. So this is the next step. I'm going to um, remove this and then we'll move on to the upper uh, back support and then we'll remove the center cushion and then we'll start with the process. All right, so once you cut that rope, and you cut the rope and basically just separate it. You're not gonna reuse it. You're going to pull up on the sides of the seat, so in between uh, your seatbelt um, harness here and the other side, you're just gonna pull it out because it's kind of tucked away in between here. As you can see, this piece is gonna stay on this entire time. This is a trim leather piece in the frame. So you just kind of pull it out then the next step is to reach under it and look, look what happens, you see that? The zippers, the zippers. So you, what you're gonna do is you're going to unzip the back side of the seat. So you're gonna, just gonna unzip both sides of the seat. Yeah, you got zippers on each side. And then we're gonna flip this seat over again onto its headrest like this. And this here is actually the first two push pins you're gonna remove. And that is for the middle section of the seat. I'm gonna show you guys here in a second. All right, so once you got the two push clips removed, um, obviously they go through here and then into the frame of the seat. Use a trim tool. The next thing you're gonna do is you're going to remove these staples. There's uh, basically about four of them on each side. Once you get with side cutters and pull them out, that will release the side or the upright of your seats. So that's the next step. All right, so once you release the zippers, uh, the two push clips, um, and um, just basically that rope that goes around this bottom cushion here, these two push clips that I showed you guys before, they're actually right here, they hold the middle section on. Now, to remove this middle section, what you're gonna do is you're going to push up on the cushion, just like that. And then you're really gonna muscle it and bam, it comes right off in one piece, just like that. This tab and this tab is actually what really holds this cushion on. As you can see, there is a um, bracket here, bracket right here, pretty simple. And then you got obviously the two push clips that live behind the seat. So this is the first bag you're gonna see and get it in to place make sure it's fully seated because they do pop out during the uninstall so i'm sorry i'm moving the camera let me set it down and show you guys so now it's in place so now what you're going to do is you're going to take uh, your trim tool you're gonna take this piece. This is the first piece that comes off the center piece. Just lay it somewhere in your couch. Those are the two push pins. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Well, actually, I'm sorry. You're gonna remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight push clips to remove the upright bolster once you have all the push clips out now what you're going to do is literally just 
peel back the back skin seat and pull it off and remove it. Oh, I forgot to tell you something. That was, was my first oopsie, actually. You see this rod that's inserted that actually the push clips go through, okay? On, let me zoom out, on the seat. I tried to reuse this on the aftermarket seat skin and I ended up replacing the zippers because they got this too tight and when I tried to zip up the back, well, the zippers ripped. But actually, <laughs> the top is a hook and there is a slot in the seat right here, okay? Actually, it's right there. I'm gonna show you right there on each side. So what you wanna do is, before you remove it, you wanna push this up and away. So put this, push this rod like this and get it out. So up and away, it's just a, a hook. And now you can slide this whole piece out of the way. So now this whole leather will come right off. So at this point, you are just left with a cushion which we'll remove here in a second, and I'll show you something to watch for. This feet, this piece here, this foam piece, actually on the OEM setup, hugs the seat like this. This supports, basically gives you a little bit more padding around the airbag, but on the new skins, you actually have added support. I'll show you guys when I reinstall it. So this goes in a pile of the old skins, just like so. All right, so now with the lower cushion, all you have to do is just peel it back. And of course I forgot. And of course I forgot. So you do have a couple of more rain clips here. One, two, and you got three, four that you have to remove to actually pull the cushion off. All right, so once you peel back the seat, you will find that there are more rings these upholstery clip rings right in this area. Just take your time. There's four on each side and you just release them basically once again using the side cutters. And now what you wanna do is slowly but surely put pressure on the cushion because, I'm gonna show you something here. In the first one, there is Velcro. So let me put the phone down and I'm going to show you guys exactly what I mean. All right, so here's the bottom cushion. And what I, when I said, since I'm by myself, they do have grooved in Velcro inserts. And what you want to do is you want to slowly, once you get the back lifted up, actually start from the front of the seat, right? Lift this up. And then what you're going to do is you're going to hold down to this channel first. So just put your finger here and start peeling away at the seat skin, the original seat skin. Okay, and then it goes all the way through the seat. So each crease actually has Velcro that sticks the leather to the cushion. So just work on it slow and then you'll be in good shape. And then, you know, just work out any of the loose, uh, you know, dirt, debris or whatever else is in. But as you can see on the seat, you got Velcro running the lengthways, crossways, and um, like I said, just work it really slow because if you go too fast, you're actually gonna pull this away from the cushion and you have to re-glue it or deal with it later. So there you go. The seat is bare bone, time for new skin. Oh, I almost forgot. The center piece, the center cushion is the easiest to remove. Once you remove the two push pins, and you basically lift up on it to get it off the tabs, it's literally all Velcro. Got a Velcro here. Bear with me. It's been on here for a minute. Let me... All right, almost forgot about the center cushion. This is the easiest part of the whole reupholstery. As you can see, these are the two tabs that overlap and go under um, your uh, upright. Once you get them um, off, this is all Velcro. So you just undo the Velcros side to side, top to bottom, and check this out. Easiest pie. This piece peels right off, but once again, you got Velcro in the middle, so which What is going on everybody? This is Mike from The Last Corvette. So it's been about a week since I did anything to the seat. So I went through and took 
the old skins apart they're laying over there under that pile of beach stuff uh here is the new reupholstered center cushion started to take all the new hardware out of the trunk to uh, finally reassemble the seat so let me explain something to you um it really does help to stretch the um, or just we'll say to overlay the new skins over the seat and let it just sit there let it acclimate you're not going to get all the wrinkles out just like i couldn't get all the wrinkles out out of the driver's seat that i did first but that is will be the the finishing touch or the finishing step when i actually take a steamer to this leather to tighten everything up and smooth out all the wrinkles but as you can see your upright just literally drapes let me zoom out over the back of the seat the cushion is the same way i don't have a wire in it right now but it just goes right over the existing foam okay of your seat and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the oem clips if they're in bad shape you can always go to any uh, auto parts store and replace them so on these seats once you disassemble everything the way i reassemble it is the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the four push pins or push clips back into the headrest area let me show you where they go so this here is a stitched in um basically lip that they leave for these aftermarket seat skins on an original OEM seat, it's the same thing. You have a stitch here, but there's a plastic, um, basically, piece um, to, to give you better contact when you actually snap this in. But when I did my driver's seat, it worked just fine. And what we're going to do is there is um, one hole right there. It's kind of hard to see. But anyway, you got one hole here, one hole here, three, four. And then what I do is I like to stretch it, get it over the slip, because remember, you have to leave this lip here exposed, this little tab, because that's how that center cushion is going to snap in, in here, in here, um, so it's firmly secure. Make sure your um, airbag is in position. It's not um, out of track. There's a little lip. like So this base here, there's one, two, three, four, uh, push clips as well. You don't need to remove it. You just leave this bag in place, but just be uh, careful when you're reinstalling so you don't puncture anything. So the way, the way this works is this. I'm going to stretch this out like it is now. I'm going to take a pick and I'm going to find my first hole and then I'm going to make an incision in this add-on stitched lip. And then I'm going to simply just put the push clip through this and then into the frame of the seat so when i'm done i'm gonna show you guys how it looks so this here is what i do so i overlay the um, this little stitch down piece where the uh, body clips are going to go and i locate with a finger where the first hole is i normally start with the one here and then you simply just take your pick make an incision and get the hole large enough for the pin or the for the clip to go through so let me show you. So we got a hole here. We're going to take our first clip. We're going to put the clip through. Okay, just like that. Let's put it all the way through. Just like that. So then you're going to locate your first hole, which is right here. And you're going to simply... Push it in place, just like that. The OEM, if you look at my uh, video when I was taking uh, the OEM leather skin apart, that's exactly how um, this portion of the seat is actually secured to the main frame. So let me do three more, and I'm going to show you how that looks. Okay, so we got four push clips in. Okay. Um, very, very nice uh fitment and of course before you do any of this make sure that your cross flag if you have one if you just have your regular black leather on the headrest make sure it's center line of the seat lined up so and now this portion here is ready uh for step two so like i said it's oem style 
meaning that you're using the OEM push clips. Like I said, if you break one or if it's wore out, you can always get more, but you are gonna have some left over because on this side of the seat, now we're gonna start working on the actual side bolsters, which, <clears throat> let me zoom out here. This is the crucial part, and no, it's not gonna look perfect until you actually steam all the wrinkles out, but um, overall, what you need to do is you need to do one side at a time, and I do have my zippers on the back side of the seat, basically 75% closed or zipped. That's where I made my first mistake, is the first time I did it, I overstretched this here, and I allowed no room for the zippers to actually zip all the way down the back side of the seat, which led me to um, uh, taking the, the driver's seat uh, over to upholstery shop to replace the, uh, the zippers. But anyway, over here, if you guys remember, on the side, the inner side of the seats, what GM uses, GM uses these guys, okay? So you have a hook that goes into the frame of the seat, and then it turns like this. This actually here is the passenger side. No, this would be, yeah, this would be the, if you, this is a passenger seat. So this would be um, the side closer to the driver's seat. So it hooks into the frame. Then you have a body clip here and a body clip here. I also tried reusing these, and let me tell you, it doesn't work. Even though the little pockets are stitched in, but it just becomes way too tight. And what I use, and I'll show you guys when I do my first side, I actually got <clears throat> stainless steel M6 washers, and I got, uh, let's see here what I do with them. I got, these are, I believe, number eight, same thing, stainless steel screws. I know I bought a pack. I just know what I did with it to, to show you guys at Lowe's. So washers, M6 washers there, flat washers. These were actually, uh, I bought these from for, for another project that I was working on. But these screws I ended up buying um, at Lowe's. Uh, you're going to need, if you're doing both seats, you're going to need 20 total. Because basically all 10 of them get used up on one uh, seat. And uh, I'm trying to locate the other... Uh, I don't know what I did with it. I thought I had it with me. But anyway, I'll find it. And you're going to use, so they come five per pack. You're going to use 10 per seat. So, oh, here it is right here. Oh, zip ties. No, I'm sorry. There's 10. Yep, 10 total. So, 10, 10 screws per seat. So, you're going to need two packs. Here they are. The eight by half. All right, so I'm gonna start getting the leather stretched out and, and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the top and you're gonna screw in right into this backing. So obviously that's why I'm using short screws. And this is what I'm gonna do. This lip here is where I'm going to put the washer and the screw in and you wanna start at the top, making the leather basically as wrinkle-free as possible. But the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that this skin here is stretched all the way to the bottom. Okay, because you don't want to um, fasten it and then, you know, realize you have a gap here in the foam showing. So let me work on that. Talk to you guys later. All right. So this would be the side um, closest to the driver's seat is done. As you can see, what I did is I stretched everything out to the best of my ability. Um, and I made one, two, three, four, five, six, actually, um, anchor points here okay this makes the seat nice and tight the bolster side the bottom one that you do is very important but also don't <laughs> make sure that you're not um, going to drill or pinch this airline okay that connects interconnects these airbags uh, that would be uh, somewhat bad so make sure this is out of the way either over or under but not through if you do that, you're going to have to make a splice and, uh, and repair it. But now it's on to the airbag side. And <clears throat> I did bring this up. So the original uh, seats or the skins have a padding that goes over this airbag. Um, what they do on aftermarket skins, they stitch in this extra flap 
that basically protects the hard part of the airbag. And it's basically just for wear. You're never going to make contact with the airbag. You're going to make contact with the bolster, with the cushion. But anyway, that's that's how it looks. We got one, two, three, four, four push pins. We also have six screws here holding the side of the seat in place. And like I said, this will um, stretch out over time. Uh, actually, my plan is once I get the seat in, the next day it's nice and sunny. I'm gonna let the sun do its trick first and then we'll use um, a steamer. But regardless, just take your time. And also don't forget these bottom push pins on this um, airbag uh, pad here. Um, they need to be put back in. They're actually anchor points on the original OEM uh, skin uh, setup. But just put them in, that way it's not flopping all over the place. Anyway, on to this side, same thing. Pull it down and start from the top. So you're gonna start stretching it, and what you wanna do is get rid of as, as many wrinkles as you can. So normally what I do is I'll bring it in, make my first contact, and then go from um, basically top down. All right, talk to you guys later. Okay, so now both sides of the bolsters are firmly secured to the inner frame of the seat or the frame seat itself. I did have to add one extra screw. So instead of five, it's six right there. And that's just all how the leather stretches over the bucket itself, right? It's, you can't really just prepare for it. Uh, but I also, as you can see, added um, OEM push clips, so same thing, made a made an incision with my trusty punch here. And push clips go right into the OEM spots where um, they would normally connect. But you can see there's one on the bottom, so you got one, two, three, four, five. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's hard to do it through the camera. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, actually here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have one more. Um, on this particular uh, seat. The other one stretched out a little bit better where I only used five, including these uh, added uh, push clips. And uh, believe it or not, now we can double check everything, right? Make sure the hose is uh, nice and, and, and uh, clear of screws and push pins. And now we can actually put the centerpiece on. Now the centerpiece on, if you're ever doing this, same thing. If you flip it around, this little flap is the bottom. So this flap, when you install it, will actually go through this section here, right through this opening, uh, because what we're going to do is we're actually going to um, overlap it and secure it to the back side of the seat, once again, with push pins. I think there's two, but it's very, very easy. You stretch it out, and it goes on. Now, I did make an incision here. So you have two anchor points on this center cushion. You got one here, okay? And then you got one here. So when it comes to making incisions in your leather kits, of course, you're gonna have to make one here. And then this one is just very simple. That's just how OEM actually overlaps their flap right through uh, this anchor point. But anyway, you got two of them. You gotta latch it in here which is the top, and you also got to latch it and snap it in place, uh, which is the bottom. Now, what I found was easier for me to do is to sit it in place and actually get the center in first and get that snapped in and then peel back the top. And I'll show you guys when I um, get it in place and then um, get the top anchored. So let me show you, um, I guess, the, the finished product when it comes to the upright. All right, so there we go. This is the center cushion in place. Um, and like I said, what I do is, so when you remove it, you obviously un you're going to undo the bottom uh, for uh, push clips, which I'll show you here. That's the next step. But then you literally just lift up on it and disengage the tabs, uh, your locking tabs. And like I said, when you're reinstalling, what I found easier is to get the middle one snapped in. You'll hear it click into place and then if you try to pull the cushion off it's going to stay in place but then if you look over here you see that little tab and the basically the anchor rod what i normally do is i will bend this back with my finger and bend it over the rod and then snap it into place and uh trust me i'm doing this for the first time in the c6 corvette and this here is not obviously uh, a fold that's a stitch you see it on both sides 
And <clears throat> once everything is zipped up, this is actually going to stretch out even more. And it's going to look nice, but this is uh, the seat starting to you know, starting to come together. And yes, even professionals do use steam to get rid of all the fine imperfections and leather uh, because it's not going to stretch uh, perfect by any means, even though OEMs use it. Well, OEMs use companies to make seats for them. All right, so let's put a couple of push pins in the back side. I'll show you how that looks, and then we're going to start making some incisions. Yikes. All right, so I just secured the back side or the back flap the back flap that is of the um, the center cushion and this is uh, let me zoom out again so you guys can see so it feeds through okay basically in between the upright and the cushion and then you got two oem push clips to go right into the frame of the seat again now you see these little set screw or set screws these screws that i put in we're actually going to grind these off on both sides that is very common it happened to me uh, I could have went, I guess, with a shorter screw, but, you know, you want to get rid of these so you don't cut your finger or, you know, poke through the leather. But anyway, bam, bam, two points, and now your center cushion is in place. And like I said, it's so important. That's the number one mistake that I made is to leave these zippers basically in fully down or closed position. Uh, before you uh, attempt to stretch out over the bolsters and the airbag. Uh, otherwise, you'll be replacing those zippers because you'll make it, it's going to go on way too easy. You're going to make mistakes like I have, and then you'll be replacing those zippers because these zippers are not made to, you know, they're not heavy-duty zippers. They will come apart, and once the slider comes apart, you're screwed. Uh, you have to re-stitch all this, and lessons, lessons learned for sure. All right, so the next step is, um, well, actually couple things so this side has a so once again on the zipper this side has a knot and that's what you want to do so the slider doesn't come off OEM is the same way so I'm gonna make the same knot here and as just so if you go too far then once again it's gonna be a, a, ma a major problem trying to um, get this uh, uh, slider back uh, in place but anyway so what I'm gonna do now is very simple. I'm going to leave this portion be because now we're going to start dealing with the cushion and making trim cuts. And the trim cuts, the main important one is here. And I'm going to show you guys once I make this trim cut and install the bezel. I'll show you guys that as well, the new bezels that I got. Um, we'll start actually on the cushion and feeding the, the wire through. And that's basically the finishing touches. But um, yeah, so I'm going to start on this. Uh, then make the incision on the side for all your controls and for also for the recline lever. But those are much easier to make because there are brackets and there are also um, basically uh, side covers or fascias to go over that. So if you overcut slightly, not a big deal. Or if your cuts look like crap, not a big deal. It's going to be covered up. Talk to you guys later. All right, so let me zoom out. The first incision is made. That's the main important one. That's the one where I screwed up, honestly, guys. And I'm going to have to trim this a little bit. I might not have to. I'm going to test fit the bezel first. But um, you basically make your, when everything is stretched out, you make your incision, the first incision, right under the lever itself, okay? And then um, you'll go out about a quarter inch out. You'll make your incision away, just basically measure from the edge, of the lever and then it's about inch and a half vertical so basically right under the lever because the, the the leather will sag quarter inch on each side okay and then about an inch and a half top and then you can trim it as needed well, when i first did this i overcut up top and that's why i had to get um well custom made bezel so i'm going to grab my bezel i'm going to prep it and i'm going to show you guys um, how it looks all right, so this here is a new bezel that lives like this. I already have it installed on my driver's side seat. These are oversized, like I said, unfortunately, because my driver's seat, this was overcut right here. My mistake, I was, it was like midnight and I was trying to make something happen. I don't know why, but anyway, so we went through three different versions. First, I ordered the OEM uh, dimensions. Obviously, then I had to ask the guy to make me custom dimensions. Uh, which he did, but then we also switched out the compound because the original one was a little bit too hard. 
um, almost like glass and it was breaking every time I would try to snap in these uh, tabs right here. This is how it locks in, right? Groove right into those guys there on each side. But anywho, so as you can see, this doesn't come off unless you disassemble the seat. So first you have to put it horizontal and then you're gonna slowly rotate it into place and you have to be really careful to get into position like this. So of course, you're gonna to have to be pushing on the bezel. So you're gonna to have to put masking tape over it when you do this, otherwise you'll scratch it. Uh, that's another lesson learned, uh, you'll scratch it. Now, if you're reusing your OEM ones, the OEM ones over the years, that's why they crack, that's why my driver's side seat was cracked, um, was um, their uh, concave, their bowed in over, over just years of being snapped in. So you don't really necessarily have to be super careful with those because you already have relief, so you can rotate it in. But these new ones are square, they're straight, and yeah, you have to put tape on them, otherwise you will, uh, uh, you know, crack them, scratch them, and also make a mark where the core that is. That way you don't, you know, do all this work and install it upside down. All right, let me install this, see if I have to trim any of this stuff, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so this is the bezel installed. Um, once again, masking tape is your friend. I masked off basically this vertical, the horizontal across. And what you want to do is you want to position this lever. That's kind of hard to do. That's why I couldn't really uh, record it. But you want to position it uh, about center. Obviously, you're going to have this uh, slot vertical. I'm sorry, horizontal. And then you're going to slowly just push on it, push it into the cavity, and then rotate it 90 degrees so the bezel is vertical. And then adjust it and snap it into place. It's easier said than done, but um, that's just how they come off. So, and this one is a little thicker actually. So, but you know what? They look pretty good. The driver's side has the same thing. And uh, moving on, now I'm going to make incisions on the control side and uh, I'm going to show you guys how that looks. All right, guys, this is Mike from the last Corvette again. So, this here is the side incision, and this is very, very simple. You're just following the opening. See, as you can see, this is all metal frame. There's also a notch here, and that notch is for, let me move some of this padding, is for your control, believe it or not. So you actually put your forward, the six-way control knob in uh, the proper way, proper orientation. So that's for your lumbar, that's for your control. But the first thing you do before you start making this cut is stretch out the cushion this way and find where this rod comes out for your recline and then make a basically you stretch it out with your finger feel where the center line is and make a cross cut like this like this don't make it too big as you can see nice and tight and, um, and that's it that's all you do here and then once you feed it through you can start working on opening this up and I just do it by feel you basically once the skin is stretched you just take a razor blade and follow this profile of the opening and um, and you're done and I'll show you guys how the bracket goes back on and the trim and obviously the lever um, so anyway the next step for me is to feed my wire through first and once the wire is fed through we're going to once again double check the cushion and uh, believe it or not we're going to put the side uh, controls and, and the trim back on the seat and then we're going to finish up with working on the back side of the seat which basically requires um, just putting all the, the cushion uh, Velcro back together, also a couple of screws, a couple of push nuts, um, and, uh, or push clips, and we'll be good to go. But it's starting to uh, look pretty nice. Actually, it looks better than the driver's seat. Once again, lessons learned. Okay, everybody. So it took a little bit of time, but I got this wire fed. And the reason I have enough wire to do two seats, well, that's because I might have to redo my driver's side seat. So regardless, if you choose to go with a thin galvanized cable like this, um, or with rope, and that's what uh, OEM comes with, rope, you're still going to have to Put something like this in because this is the easiest way to feed a line or a rope through this little stitched in groove or this channel and what that does is regardless if you use cable i use cable on on the back or on the driver's side seat this is what actually tightens up the cushion um, 
around um, the, the base of uh, your uh, seat, or I should say this is what tightens up the skin around the cushion uh, and around the base of the seat and goes under the seat and then you uh, can use either anchors or zip ties to actually zip tie it to the frame and then you snip off the recess and then you're good to go. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're actually going to finish um, the side the side trim. The side trim is ready uh, to go on. And then we're going to finish up the back side, which I'll have to flip the seat over. Of course, I'm working on my garage floor, so don't just lay it on, uh, you know, like epoxy uh, floor. Lay it on my runner. I'm using the runner or, or a rug or something like that so you don't damage the leather. Uh, now, and then <clears throat> this here too, it's not tight because we, the final piece is actually doing the, the bottom cushion, getting this wrinkle out, getting this tight once we flip, flip the seat over and then, um, yeah, it's going to look, uh, it's going to look okay. Talk to you guys later. All right. So I went through my pictures, change of plan. So before we tighten all this up, I wanted to put the, the trim bezel on, uh, I'm sorry, the, the bracket on, um, feed both of my cables through. This cable for the seat belt is going to stay outside of uh, the, the leather side of the cushion. We're not making any incisions. That's how it was uh, OEM. So three screws, one, two, three, just like the disassembly, leave your uh, harness plugs out. Um, now the best thing to do is obviously pull down on the cushion so it's tight. Um, and then what you're gonna do is find your first hole and just locate it and then same thing use a punch punch it in screw it in place then find your second hole punch through the leather uh, and when i say find it this is your obvious position here and here's that little cut out the little notch that i made right there so you can just peel back the leather a little bit find the first screw line it up and then once one technically is lined up it's really easy to find the other two but anyway now this is um, in place so the only thing I really have uh, to do at this point is uh, I got to put this bezel on and um, and then put the lever on. All right, talk to you guys later. Hello. All right, guys. So I got um, both of the connectors um, set up. Uh, this is for obviously the bags. This is the six-way uh, power seat. And as you can see, there is a notch here. Where there's a tab here and a notch here in the frame so that's how you don't uh, screw up your <laughs> um uh power seat adjustment you know because i when i first took it off i didn't have a picture of this and i'm like wait a minute what if i do all this drop it in the vehicle and then realize that you know the switches are backwards but no they obviously thought about this but anyway so got them all connected now this bezel will go over this whole contraption like this I'm going to snap it into place, and yes, uh, this piece here, the actual um, power adjustment of your seat, just kind of fits into the groove and then gets uh, the, the little trim piece or the little uh, lever uh, that snaps in over it. So there's nothing really holding it in place uh, besides this outer trim. So let me install it, and uh, the way you install is you want to get this portion, as I said before, in first. So you see that little groove, so it's actually going to go in like so. And then we're going to fit it over the lever and, uh, and snap it in place. Okay. All right, so this is the lever uh, that came off this seat. It's not a replacement lever. Actually, the replacement lever that I got for the driver's seat, it's slightly gray. So it's definitely not OEM. Uh, the seller said it was OEM. First, they sent me a C5 lever. Uh, but then they sent me the right one, but it's it fits fine, but it definitely doesn't match the trim So I'll be on a lookout for a used uh, lever uh, once again, but uh, It's functioning. So anyway, get your um, Retaining clip in place You're going to line this up. Like I said, there's a flat spot on it So it's only gonna go in one way this way and then you're just gonna click it into place And that's it. It's on So it's simple as that. There's really no way of screwing this up. It locks in and stays in place, and then we can, uh, uh, you know, try it out. And as you can see, it's working just fine. But yeah, um, the driver's seat is uh, when I get the vehicle, 
out of the garage and all that and washed up. This has been sitting for a couple of weeks now. I'll show you guys exactly what I mean. So it's slightly different shade of plastic, uh, normally found in aftermarket uh, injection molding uh, machines. Uh, you know, it's not quite the same, but I'm not worried about it. But uh, just to give you a perspective, like a C5 lever, because uh, I did mock it up just for, you know, shits and giggles. The geometry of it, there's a slight angle here, so it actually goes away from the seat, uh, from this uh, trim piece here. And uh, it just doesn't look right, and also interferes with the door sill. So, talk to you guys later. Okay, so now we got the seat basically upside down. A um, couple of things. So, before you actually secure this... Um, lower flap let me zoom out again this is for the cushion itself you need to secure the um the sides of your cushion skin and on both of these seat covers my um velcro just wouldn't overlap it was too tight so i just used a simple zip tie once again use my um uh pick or my hole puncher made two um incisions right where it's double stitched where the velcro lives and just zip tied it uh nice and tight the wire is still loose once again the controls are on the wire is gonna be the last thing we do so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this back like so and uh and actually i'll show you how i how i did it normally you would use those upholstery rings here but i don't have that and then another thing too is these are your stock um once again push pins here and this flap here is from the side of the seat okay so from the upright so same thing you're just using a um, pick or a hole puncher making that incision and overlapping um pretty simple stuff here all right i'll uh, get with you guys here in a minute all right, so this overlap piece, which, one second, let me zoom out. Very unprofessional of me, which is your cushion. I made four incisions right in the leather. You got one, two, three, four zip ties going right across this crossbar here. And uh, that's uh, pretty much it for uh, when it comes to uh, securing this piece. So now that's really left is I need to obviously trim off these uh, screws that are sticking through the frame. Uh, that's not good. And then uh, tie up my uh, cable, but I am gonna flip the seat over to make sure everything looks good. And then we'll do the cable next, trim the pieces, and the seat is actually ready to go back into the vehicle. And this is your airbag harness here, but yeah, everything looks okay. I don't see any major issues here. All right. Okay, everybody. So I was able to obviously clean up the the screws that bought. Uh, what is going on, everybody? This is Mike from the last core of that. So I'm about to flip the seat over and show you guys how it looks. Uh, here are the little screws standing up uh, going through the frame. Same thing happened on the driver's side seat. Got them uh, cleaned up, touched them up with a little black paint. Now, only thing that's left is zipper zipper and then the way these zippers actually go even on the oems they tuck in behind the cover like so on both sides and then this will actually rest up against um your back support pretty much where the uh the fuel tanks live and you know i thought to myself they, they should relax when I steam them. If not, I'll put a little bit of piece of Velcro on the bottom. Um, but anyway, okay, let me flip it over and I'll show you guys the finished product and then we'll uh, shove it in the vehicle. Okay, so this is the seat um, in its upright position. The cushion, um, everything is nice and tight. And like I said, now it needs to rest um, and um, just basically uh, form to the seat. Uh, <clears throat> this here is very typical. You have to smooth out these uh, side corners here. There's really nothing you can do uh, when you're uh, putting skins on. Um, and trust me, I'm not a professional upholstery uh, <laughs> repair facility or whatever you want to call it. So 
I'll have to let the sun do, uh, do the trick and also whip out my steamer and uh, steam out whatever is left. But you don't want to do it right away. You want to wait. Like I said, I'm going to wait for a nice sunny day to actually um, let the heat from the sun kind of do its magic. And then from there, we'll do another video of, um, you know, the steam actually um, tighten all the stitches and all the fibers up in this leather. But overall, it looks pretty good. Trim piece, seat belt, all that stuff is on and uh, it's ready to go in. All right, so now it's time to take this seat and put it back in the vehicle. Uh, I'm going to go get my flashlight. Also, obviously, towels down so you don't scratch up uh, any of your paint. Uh, just leave the harnesses where they are, kind of right in the middle. And the seat pretty much has to go in kind of uh, in a uh, horizontal position, you know, 45, almost degree angle. And then you swing it up. And it's okay if you touch the headliner. That's actually my next project. I'm going to buy some... Uh, spray on glue for uh, fabric and on my steel roof obviously there's a liner and it's starting to peel back in certain places so we'll do that next that's going to be an easy project but anyway uh, I'm going to get it in lay it on its side connect the harnesses then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the battery before I actually lag the seat uh, to the vehicle uh, to the frame and make sure there's no interference everything works like it should and then we'll uh, whoop out the 15 millimeter socket and actually get it uh, mounted to the vehicle. See? All right, so before I plop the seat down into uh, its resting spot, I wanted to show you guys the connections. So this is the main power uh, connected back up. And you can see there's a little recess spot in the, in the carpet itself. There's a cutout. And then if you look over here, this is the airbag plug. Connected only goes in one way, and these little... Uh, safety pins is so it doesn't come apart and there's also a clip on the harness side that stays in the vehicle that goes over that same rod um, that I was zip tying all my anchor points to so all right uh, next thing is to put the seat belt down and no you don't cut that's I think one other thing that I miss you don't cut uh, anything over this where the seat belt is uh, you um, just undo this nut and then the seat belt harness goes right over. So I'm gonna grab my uh, 15 mil um, socket, put the seat belt back on, connect this plug, and we'll be back in business. And look, I got more money. That's one thing about low profile vehicles, low vehicles to the ground. <laughs> they always uh, steal money from uh, passengers. So never get in in Camaros, Corvettes, or any sports cars with change in your pockets. <laughs> Talk to you guys later. Okay, so the seat belt is back on, the trim is on. Um, here's the harness, basically hides in this little uh, cover. Once again, this little fascia, that's the nut that you're gonna use your 15 mil socket for. And there's also a guide right here that shows you what the position is of the seat belt on the vehicle. And uh, now we're gonna plop her in and I'm gonna connect the battery and we'll see if we have a successful launch. All right, well, success. Got the seat in, seat belt on, power connected, battery connected, forward reverse. That's your middle. Actually, that's your bolster, I'm sorry. And then that's your middle cushion there. And you want to um, get these bad boys inflated. It helps out, stretch out the skin as well. So now I'm going to anchor the four uh, nuts and uh, start the vehicle up. All right, everybody, so the last thing to do before you put the floor mat on is obviously put these covers um, over the front anchors. Same thing, you have a little uh, clip there that fits over this little tab. So you get it in. Of course, it's much, much more difficult to do it on camera, especially when you're, um, especially when you're trying to uh, do two things at the same time. But anyway are the push pins they go in here bam the other one goes here bam and you're done and of course last thing you're gonna do is grab the floor mat 
with playing your floor man. And sorry guys, I had you under the floor man. <laughs> Get it all laid out. Put up into place, and now we're gonna do a start, and uh, hopefully no airbag lights. Hopefully, talk to you guys later.